Hello, welcome to The Repair Specialist and in this video I would like to reach out to all of you who have come to start your chainsaw, strimmer, hedge cutter or some other type of garden machinery and have found that when you get it started and turn off the choke, the engine just dies. Well, if you've had this problem, then watch this video because not only do I identify to you what's going on, I explain why and how this is happening and some quick and simple solutions to get your machine up and running again without huge repair bills. And so I'll begin by putting it all out here diagrammatically. We'll start with this fuel tank and then we'll put the fuel there inside the tank. We've got a fuel filter and a pipe which attaches to a carburetor and the carburetor attaches to the engine. And the model setup I've got here is a two stroke system. OK, so now we'll start the engine. As the piston rises, this is where we start to see things happen. It's creating a vacuum behind it pulling up and that's pulling in air here on this side of the carburetor. And it wants to go into the carburetor, but because the choke has closed, only so much of that air can get through. Now, because because of that, a vacuum builds up inside here, so it's sucking fuel out of that jet quite heavily. And because it's doing that, there's more fuel in there than air ratio. And remember, we've just started this engine, so we're still on choke, and the engine will run for several cycles like this until it warms up enough to take off the choke. The engine's warm now so we can remove the choke and as soon as we do we can see we've got a higher influx of air and because there's less restriction there caused by the butterfly we've got less vacuum there pulling out as much fuel we get a higher air to fuel ratio but this time the mix is of a better mix to allow the engine to run now that it's warm. Even though the choke butterfly is now open there is some vacuum maintained inside here by the Venturi by this restriction here. This is enough to allow enough fuel to be drawn out of the jet. What we find with an engine that will only run on choke is that it's an engine asking for more fuel. So basically the problem is that we've got a fuel starvation issue that the engine's going through. So first of all, let's imagine our fuel filter is blocked with crud. That means it's going to allow a substandard amount of fuel into the fuel pipe here, down into the carburetor through the system, and down the bottom here, available for the jet. So that means less fuel coming out of the jet, and that ratio of air and fuel there changes, so there's more air now than fuel. And we haven't got enough fuel now to run the engine efficiently, because remember, the choke is off at the moment. So less air enters the crankcase here, which will eventually end up at the top of the piston here for combustion. And so at this point, the engine will start to bog down because we haven't got the fuel to keep it running efficiently and a usual reaction when we hear that bog down sound is to reach down and apply the choke again this again restricts the airflow coming through the carburetor builds up the vacuum inside here and draws down harder on the jet here pulling more fuel out and it helps to maintain this flow to a degree and creating a situation where it's pulling through that fuel filter that bit harder to compensate for the blockage however if the fuel filter is too blocked of course we won't be able to get any fuel through so absolutely no engine running in that case and so there we are then my first reason for an engine only running on choke is fuel filter blocked and the only remedy for this is to replace the fuel filter regularly on a service because that's what they're designed to do and so my next reason for an engine only running on choke is to do with the fuel tank. And in this case, the fuel filter's working just fine. But as the engine continues to use fuel, it continues to leave the fuel tank. And as it does so over a period of time, it creates a vacuum above there. But thanks to a breathing mechanism usually found in the fuel tank cap, when that vacuum builds up, it draws in air from outside the fuel tank and neutralizes this vacuum. And this vital influx of air allows the fuel to continuously leave the fuel tank and supply the carburetor to feed the engine. So if this breather valve wasn't allowing air in, let's say because it's blocked or damaged, then we'd get that vacuum back inside the fuel tank there. And that vacuum would stop the fuel from leaving the fuel tank. And what we're left with here is fuel starvation once again. Similar to how it was when we couldn't get enough fuel out of the fuel filter because it was blocked. Now we've got less fuel going into the carburetor because it's not allowing the fuel out of the fuel tank. And so in this situation where there's a total blockage of the breather, the engine will just stop because no matter what we do, we won't be able to get the that fuel in there even if we put on the choke. If however there's a partial blockage of this breather allowing a small amount of air through then a small vacuum will build up there and in my personal experience this vacuum is enough to let some fuel through but it's causing a starvation for the engine there isn't enough going through so that's when we get a situation where the engine's not running efficiently it's bogging down when the choke's off and so in this case what do we do when we hear that bog down sound well we turn the choke back on to see if it runs any better and what happens as we've seen before we've got a vacuum building up inside here which helps to draw harder on the jet there pulling more fuel through and helping to compensate to allow more fuel to get 
up there to the engine and so if you do suspect it's this problem and you stop the engine or the engine stopped itself we can do a little test at this point if we make sure we're in a quiet place and slowly undo the fuel tank cap and listen if we hear a hissing sound as we open it that means there's air rushing into the fuel tank because that vacuum inside the tank is drawing it in and that instantly neutralizes it another thing I've done in the past is I've actually run the machine for a while with the fuel tank cap slightly loose just to see if I can make it run longer without reapplying the choke than I did do before when it was tight and whilst using a machine with the fuel tank cap loose to test for a fault is one thing knowingly actually using the machine day to day long term is another and it's quite easy to forget that the fuel tank caps loose and then we start leaking fuel and then it could catch on fire and so in my opinion then if you have narrowed it down to the fuel tank cap or the breather of the fuel tank being a problem the only solution is to get a new breather or a new fuel tank cap Moving on now to my next reason that an engine will only run on choke relates now to the fuel pipe itself. And so fuel pipes then being made of a rubbery plasticky type material they can sometimes degrade and they can leak fuel. And whilst that fuel's leaking we can sometimes see of course but also it draws in air from that same point in some situations because what we've got here we've got the fuel pump that's frantically pumping inside the carburetor there creating a vacuum down pulling that fuel into the carburetor and as it pulls that fuel in it also pulls in the air with it but because the fuel pipes damaged it's also pumping air round right round the carburetor and so instead of there being a good supply of rich neat fuel coming out of the main jet here we've actually got a mix of air and fuel already which is diluting the fuel even further and so when that dilution actually gets into the inlet with a lot more air than fuel way too much for the engine to combust efficiently and because of this when the engine makes that bog down sound we turn on the choke and that instantly increases the vacuum inside here in the induction tube and helps to draw out more of that fuel now the thing is here though is that because we've got fuel being drawn out with a greater vacuum there so it's drawing harder on that fuel now we might say that because we've got a hole here in the fuel pipe that it's drawing in more air as well as a result well that is true but I have found that when we've got problems like this in the fuel pipe here that turning on the choke does pull a little more fuel through and helps engine running stops that bog down when I say engine running I don't mean it will be running efficiently whatsoever absolutely not what I'm saying is when we apply the choke the engine will run although not with any particular quality and of course if we're having these kind of problems anyway applying the choke when the engine's running isn't the answer it's just telling us that there's something in there that's going wrong Let's have a look now at what happens if we get a blockage. And of course, a fuel blockage can occur sort of anywhere around these areas in the fuel pipe here or anywhere around the carburetor like this. Anywhere that sediment can build up or any kind of large material can get past the fuel filter and into these areas. Let's just say for argument's sake it's happened here. That little piece of crud build up. And like in this case now, if it is a total blockage, it's obviously stopped the flow coming through. So stopping any fuel coming out of the main jet. And that means no fuel going into the engine. And in this situation, Situation, the engine's not going to run regardless of whether we use the choke or not but if up here we had a partial blockage there would be some fuel coming out of the main jet but it wouldn't be in sufficient quantities the air to fuel ratio there wouldn't favor the engine running well at all and the engine would start to bog down and so applying the choke would be a greater vacuum pull there on the main jet and providing that that blockage there isn't blocked too much from pulling some fuel past it then a little more fuel should come out of the jet and sort of equalize things a little bit more on the air to fuel ratio and the only cure to this problem is to clean out the carburetor and make sure everything's nice and easy for the fuel to go and flow through and just to be clear this kind of problem we've seen here can occur from blockages anywhere around the carburetor really and that of course includes the fuel pipes and so moving on to another scenario let's imagine all's working well here we've got the choke open and we've got fuel coming out of the carburetor okay at a good fuel to air ratio and let's imagine that all's been running well this way for many months even many seasons and what can sometimes become an issue is the point where the carburetor joins on to the engine or the inlet manifold so specifically that junction there that point at which them two areas meet because rightfully the carburetor should be securely fixed to the inlet manifold or the engine by two retailers retaining bolts and we can normally see these on this side of the carburetor now I have come across this problem a few times in the past these retaining bolts can work their way loose over a period of time as I've said through many seasons etc and another reason is when a machine has been repaired they perhaps haven't been tightened up enough when they've been put back together another reason is I've had brand new machines come from the factory and they haven't been actually tightened up at the factory right so it's always best to just see if these retaining bolts here are tight enough for the engine to run 
correctly. That said, of course, we don't want to over tighten them and strip the threads. But in any case, as a result of these bolts not being tight enough, we've now got a slight gap between the carburetor and the inlet manifold. And as I've said, it only has to be very, very slight, even too small to see. But of course, for the purposes of this drawing here, and to get my point across, I've had to show it so we can see. And what happens when a gap like this appears here is that air is drawn through it into the inlet manifold. And this air changes the dynamics inside of here, causes two problems. First of all, of course, the engine won't have the right amount of air and fuel there for combustion to occur. Secondly, because there's air coming in from this point, we've got a reduction in there of the overall vacuum which is needed to draw that fuel out of the main jet. So as a result, we've got less fuel being drawn out the main jet to allow that engine to run efficiently. And this is one of those points at which we'd experience the engine bogging down. And a natural reaction would be to reach down and turn on the choke. And in doing so, we'd see the usual reduction of airflow and some increase in vacuum here in the inlet. And that increase in vacuum might be enough to draw some of that fuel out of the main jet there to try and equalize that air to fuel ratio and to try and make up for that loss in fuel, which can make it seem like the engine would sound a little better. But at the same time, applying that choke and increasing that vacuum inside of the Venturi area there means that there's going to be more vacuum to draw in on that gap there as well. So of course, the answer to this isn't just to apply the choke, never is. It's always to get to the root of the problem. And so the best thing to do in this case is to physically feel the carburetor and see if you can shake it from one side to the other to see if it's physically loose and also check those retaining bolts. Just see and make sure that they're nice and tight, moderately tight that is, so that it's tight enough not to cause this problem, but not too tight in order to damage any threads. But something also to bear in mind here is that this problem can also occur even if those bolts are nice and tight. And that's because just at this point here, again, where the carburetor meets the inlet area of the engine, there should be a seal or a gasket. If that seal or gasket is leaking, then you're going to get this kind of problem regardless of how tight those retaining bolts are. So, of course, the answer to this again is to replace those seals there or those gaskets. And another reason we may need to use the choke for anything other than the usual reasons for starting the engine is relating to the mixture screws, sometimes known as the carb adjustment screws, the air screws or the fuel screws. And some carburetors like this have two of these adjustments. Some have one, some actually have none. And so we can see there a little more clearly that this fuel down here in the metering area can travel through these little fuel veins like pipes in order to get to the inlet area there of the carburetor. And although the main jet here is responsible for the main source of fuel coming into the carburetor, these little fuel veins here are actually designed to contribute to the total amount of fuel going into the inlet. And so the engine is designed to run effectively by receiving fuel from these two points. And so why is this the case then? Why is it designed this way? Well, let's remember that the fuel coming out of the main jet here is the main source of fuel for the main engine running. And the amount of fuel coming out of these fuel holes here is in a much smaller amount. And it's designed that way for fine engine tuning. So in order to get one of these engines running just so. The ratio of air to fuel inside the carburetor there has to be precise. And in order for that to happen, the amount of fuel coming out of these little fuel holes here has to be adjustable. And that, of course, is where the fuel adjustment screws come in. If we take a look at just one of them here, if we were to screw this adjuster screw into the fuel vein further, we'd see that it'll start to choke off that fuel coming out. So there'd be less fuel coming out of that particular fuel vein. And of course, screwing the screw outwards would mean there'd be less restriction in there, allowing more fuel to be released. So both screws will operate in this way. One of the screws will be a H screw that will adjust the high revolution setting and one will be a L screw which will adjust the low revolution settings. These screws have to be set at just the right place then for optimal engine running to allow that ratio inside the carb to be just right. If these screws are screwed too far in, restricting too much of that fuel going into the carburetor, then we could see we'd get a problem here, a bog down problem. And this particular issue here of incorrectly set mixture screws is a very, very common thing and one I come across very, very often. And so if these screws were mistakenly turned in too far and causing that bogged down sound, then the first thing the operator would want to do is to reach down and turn on the choke. That's if they could get the engine started in the first place. But as we know, when we activate the choke, we decrease the amount of air coming into the carburetor and increase the vacuum. But that vacuum's unlikely to draw any more fuel out of these little fuel holes here because of the way the screws are set in. So it actually draws more fuel out of the main jet as a result. And this is why applying the choke might seem like it's getting the engine running that little bit better, but 
of course as always this is not the answer the answer is to get that carburetor set up properly with those mixture screw settings and another reason that an engine might only run on choke might relate to the metering diaphragm cap and normally we've got the retaining screws here there's normally four of these and they're a little bit smaller and they keep it firmly attached to the carb body so that there's no leaks in between here where the actual cap meets the body itself between the two there as well as the B in the diaphragm there's also a gasket a seal so there's no leakage there of fuel coming out or any air going in and providing that these retaining bolts are tightened correctly then there'll be no leaks past here and so if there was a gap here here because the end cap was loose of course there'd no longer be a seal it most probably wouldn't be a gap this size but as a result of this gap two things will happen there will be some leakage here of fuel but mainly the problem here will occur when the vacuum is drawing in air and that air quickly starts to fill the metering area until there's so much air in there that there's no vacuum left in there at all and of course without that vacuum the diaphragm can't be drawn upwards and so it regresses down into this position and now it's in this position it's not depressing the metering lever and so the metering lever pushes back downwards here because we've got the spring there that's pushing that lever that way because that vacuum was pulling the diaphragm up and the diaphragm was overcoming the pressure of that spring there allowing the metering lever to go up at the back but now now it's come back down of course the springs took over and because the metering lever has now come down at the back that means the front has now gone upwards and that's pushed the needle valve back onto its seat and in doing so it's blocked off any fuel coming downwards into the metering area and that then means there's little or no fuel down here to come up the main jet and into the carburetor and that result of no fuel the engine stops but what can sometimes happen is that these caps can just be only slightly loose and that causes a different problem because instead of having the possibility of noticeable fuel leaks and completely overriding the system here with a mass amount of air inside the metering area what we can get is an intermediate between everything flowing well and the engine running perfectly and the absolute stoppage that we've just explained but it's small enough for some air to get through there but not to be able to see any noticeable fuel leaking from it this lesser amount of air coming into the metering area there doesn't totally cancel out that vacuum inside there sending the diaphragm downwards instead the vacuum still exists in there but it's just reduced and so the result of that partial vacuum in there means that this diaphragm is only partially drawn upwards in comparison to where it was when everything was working fine and so the effect of all this is twofold first of all we've got air mixed in with the fuel here because we haven't got neat fuel coming out of the jet then it's already mixed with air then of course we haven't got enough fuel to keep the engine running properly secondly because the back of the metering lever is only partially pushed upwards by a partially expanded diaphragm that means there's less gap there allowed by the metering needle the less of the gap here the less of the amount of fuel allowed to flow into the metering area itself and that means less fuel available down here to be drawn up into the carburetor for the engine but in this scenario the engine is still running because there's less fuel going into the engine the engine's slowing down there's less air being drawn into the carburetor itself there's even less vacuum inside the metering area here and that of course affects the needle valve here which shuts off even further the engine's now bogging down and so at this point the operator might feel it's a good idea to turn on the choke and now we've done that the more vacuums building up inside the carburetor here and although that vacuum inside there slightly increased it's also slightly increased the vacuum down here enough in order to pull that diaphragm slightly upwards and although this vacuum may well draw in a little more air in here there is still enough there just to move that diaphragm and allow the needle valve now to move back a little bit and so that allows a slightly better flow of fuel out of the main jet and into the carburetor there which may well have relieved the symptoms there of bog down and made the engine seem like it's running a little better the problem is as always this isn't the answer we can see what the problem is we've got this cap loose down at the bottom which is allowing air in and that's what's causing all of this problem so the only remedy for that is to to tighten the cap or replace the diaphragm or replace the gasket whatever's the problem there it's a similar situation with the fuel pump cap here if the retaining screw at the top of the cap here is slightly loose or if the seal between the cap and the carb body is degraded somehow then we're going to get air leakage into the carburetor in a similar sort of way and so that air is going to mix with the fuel at this point and be carried around by it and of course anywhere where we've got air in with the fuel means that we've got less vacuum and so this fuel pump here if it does operate at all it'll operate very poorly that poor flow of fuel and air are now coming down through the carburetor and when it gets down to the bottom here it gives the same sort of symptoms as we've already seen we need to either tighten the top of the cap or replace the gasket or seal
The diaphragm itself can also give symptoms similar to what we've been seeing. And that's because the fuel pump diaphragm up here obviously relies on that pumping action. And that pumping action relies on that diaphragm being absolutely airtight. We can see there that each time the diaphragm rises, it creates a vacuum and draws in fuel as a result of that vacuum underneath it. And when the direction of pressure from the pulse line pushes in on top of the diaphragm as a result of the piston lowering, then it pushes down on the diaphragm. And that, of course, forces down on that fuel and then so on and so on. You can now imagine that if there's any problems of this diaphragm, any damage, if it's not airtight and fluid tight, then we're going to get some problems here. If there's any loss of pumping efficiency of this pump, then we're not going to get the fuel down into the metering area available for the main jet for the engine. That's why it's vital that we have these diaphragms replaced with every service, and sometimes they need replacing even in between services. And of course, the quality of the diaphragm we're fitting in the first place, that also makes a big difference. It's always best to go and use a genuine product I always believe. Now if this diaphragm was 100% damage completely stopping its pumping efficiency then of course the engine wouldn't run because we wouldn't get any fuel in there. But I'm talking about here if we've got sort of semi damage or slight damage. In this case we would get fuel in here but it would be in a smaller amount. There'd be more air to fuel and so of course the engine would start to bog down. And at this point again it might seem a natural reaction to apply the choke and that will increase that vacuum pressure inside here in the inlet and that will help to draw some more of that fuel fuel out as much as it possibly can. This might just well keep the engine sort of ticking over if you like or running lumpy but it isn't going to run properly as we've said with all of these cases. There are many more points I could make on this subject, but the last point I want to make is regarding the metering diaphragm. When fuel is drawn out of the main jet here, it increases the vacuum down here as the fuel leaves, and that draws up this diaphragm, allowing more fuel through for the main jet to use for the engine. If there was some slight damage to this diaphragm, as I said with the fuel pump diaphragm, if there's 100% damage here and it's not working, so not expanding, then we're not going to get any workings of this engine. It's not going to work at all. But if there's slight damage, some damage then instead of this diaphragm being drawn upwards then it will only be sort of drawn up partially and that's because if it's slightly torn or ripped or something like that or it's gone stiff because the expandability of these diaphragms can also falter over time then that partial movement will mean that fuel can't get past the needle valve efficiently for the engine use because the needle valve won't come back enough to do so the result there then is that we'll have too little amount of fuel again going into the inlet there and of course that will cause bog down and so again as soon as we hear that bog down sound we we'll reach down and turn on the choke and we know what happens now we've got the increase in vacuum in the inlet here and that increase in vacuum helps to pull out more fuel and as more fuels being pulled out now we've got more fuel leaving the metering area so that helps to pull that diaphragm up a little more and that helps of course to pull that needle valve back and to allow some more fuel in so I'd just like to end with this as with all of these cases when I say using the choke gets the engine running again and not saying that it's running perfectly it will be running as I've always said lumpy and it won't be running desirable at all it'll be weak but what I'm saying here and the reason for this video is that some reasons why we need to apply the choke are caused by these sorts of problems and I'd like to personally thank you for watching this whole video through to the end and if you do want to watch the full version of this video then the link should be just here at the side please also have a look down at the description the information I've got down there for you and Hopefully I'll see you in the next video. Please like and subscribe and I'll be back soon. Thank you for watching.